g'day welcome to pay it forward now it's been such a busy week and uh, after releasing my november masterclass project i didn't want all of you to miss out so i have created a beautiful little version of a sea turtle a much simplified design but absolutely delightful i think you'll agree i've made mine in all of the brightest candy colors you could make it quite realistic if you like and uh, it is the perfect accompaniment to all of my masterclass viewers uh, for our big mr t absolutely gorgeous and really simple to put together you can make it up in fabrics and felt or just fabrics if you like and uh, it's really quite simple so you'll need to download your free pattern templates i've got them all ready for you they are in the description box below so once you find that link make sure you set your printer to be printing at actual size or perhaps a4 and uh, you will find those pattern pieces will come out absolutely spot on there's a measuring guide on all of your pattern pages just check that make sure all your pattern pieces are absolutely spot on so who's ready to have a go at my beautiful little sea turtle so let's begin with our turtle by having a look at our materials and requirements so the way that this one is put together is that we have a little naked turtle and then we build a shell around it so to start off with with our body of our turtle we have our two side body pieces now these are i've made them with fabric and interfacing applied and then we have a base and i've made that one with felt with interfacing applied now you do need to interface this project now the whole project can be made entirely in interfaced fabric i like to use the felt in some areas because it just plumps it out it rounds it out and i like seeing the two different tones you'll see that i've kept my fabric for my body and my flippers quite close to the color of the felt but it is darker it just works better that way so those are my inside body pieces and then we need the head pieces and i definitely prefer the head made in felt in interfaced felt so we've got our two side head pieces make sure you do transfer all of your markings in this pattern it's very important that we have all those markings in place and our little eye markings there and you've got your center chin gusset there as well and then we move on to the flippers so the flippers i've cut the top of the flippers that we'll be showing like this and then we've got our rear flippers down the bottom the top of them are cut in the fabric so interfaced fabric and then the lower the underside of each of those flippers i've cut in felt so you see what i mean it's a little the felt is a little bit lighter and it does work better if the underside of the the flippers and the body is lighter it just gives that little pop of color when you pull it up so just try and try to match up your flippers with a felt that works so and also i'm going for an absolute you know candy colored um, turtle here and you can go with really realistic colors um, a lot of a lot of you will have seen my um, november project for masterclass which is that beautiful sea turtle I made all into the very um, natural colors and you can do that for sure I'm doing a very storybook version of this one um, thinking of a child's room or something like that so now in addition to the felt flippers on each of those lower pieces of the flippers I have added the i'm using fusible foam now you can use fusible foam or just fusible wadding i've recently discovered fusible foam and i absolutely love it if you're going to use it you need to get fusible foam that is adhesive on only one side because you can get it where it's sticky on both sides it is heat applied so you press it into place and you can see there it just gives such great substance um, a little bit more than wadding does and also it just compresses so well it just it pulls through beautifully but it holds itself so well so totally your choice this project will work with either wadding or foam so we've got our flipper pieces already 
and then we need just our little tail and I've done my tail in the same way where I've got the top piece of the tail that will be visible in the in interfaced fabric and the lower piece is that felt again interfaced felt um, now with the tail we are jointing that tail but you don't have to so we do need to join the head but you don't have to joint the tail so if you don't have a, a, a small joint for the tail that's okay I'll show you how to pop that into the seam so then we got move on to the shell so the shell has a base and that base looks like this and that is interfaced fabric again choose an interesting print for the underside because you will see that little bit on the underside and it's really nice to flip it over and have all of those bright colors so I've chosen this print that will go in with all of my beautiful uh, candy colors and then it's you just cut two pieces of this one and on the lower piece you add your fusible felt or sorry foam or wadding and I have given you actual templates for all of those wadding pieces so it's just going to be easier for you press that one into place ready on one of those pieces which we've got there so our upper shell pieces we have got good morning Jeremiah nice to have you with us we have our upper shell pieces and they are it's made in four pieces because we've got a top and we've got a lining so the lining pieces are just our interfaced fabric now I'm going to be adding beautiful fabric yo-yos as my shell detail so um, choose something choose a color where you want that background color to show and then anything you add to it is going to be extra so that's the way to choose your shell color so you've got your two liner pieces of the upper shell and you've got your two top pieces of the shell and just as we did with those other pieces the flippers and the base this is where we add our foam uh, foam or our wadding pieces onto those get those pressed into place because that is the top part of the shell and that will hold itself really well and then we need our shell embellishments so what I've used on mine for the little shell pieces I've used fabric yo-yos if you haven't made a fabric yo-yo before don't worry I'm going to show you how to do that we need our circles cut so I've got mine all made up ready and you're going to need 10 of the largest size and you're going to need 12 of the medium size and just three of the tiny little ones so they've all got their space and you've got marks also on your pattern template for your top shell where you have your foam or your wadding added if you're going to be using the yo-yos for your shell decoration go ahead and pop those marks in on the shell so it really helps you to place those all in the exact place and I've given you the sizes so it makes it a whole lot easier however there are so many different ways to decorate this shell you could definitely do some free motion embroidery you could add all sorts of little bits and fibers you could create your own little design by adding all sorts of little patches you could put beautiful quotes and inspirational words in little patches all over it little bits of trinkets just remember whatever you add to the shell keep it away from the seams and also make sure it's not too bulky to turn through because we're going to be turning this one through the lining opening and it's only about this wide here so just remember that so I find it's easy to turn through we sew all of these little yo-yos in place and it still turns through well so just remember that and also for adding my little yo-yos we need an assortment of buttons something that covers that center section and will hold that uh, little yo-yo in place so I've got quite a few there now the way that the everything is joined as I said we're going to I'm adding the tail with a joint so that's a little 16 millimeter joint this one you can add it in the seam though so you don't have to use a joint for the tail do need a joint for the head and that is a 35 millimeter joint it can be a cotter pin or a nut and bolt system 
I'm going to put a link at the top there for you to have a look at my jointing videos and they will help you out a lot if, you're, if you haven't done any jointing before. We will also need 10 snap fasteners, little press studs. These are 13 millimeter and they, I find they're the perfect size for this. That's how we attach the top shell to the bottom shell, which means you can take it apart. Um, so you need 10 of those and you're also going to need some eyes. Now in this project, I find that safety eyes absolutely work best. And I have 12 millimeter, just plain black safety eyes with their fasteners, of course. And what we're going to create is a little hooded eye like that. Very, very simple. And then we clamp it into the head as we sew it. So very easy, no, no tricky eye setting with this one. Um, and you can use a coloured uh, safety eye, anything you like there will work. And you'll also need your little eye surrounds. So they are cut from felt. Now I use the white on the underneath that really makes that eye stand out. And the same coloured felt that you're using on the head or perhaps match it up to the fabric you're using on the head, same colour um, and that one, they are both just felt with fusible webbing applied. That's just for a little bit of strength. So they are all ready to go. So we're going to be filling with polyester filling and uh, that's about it for our materials and requirements. You'll need your extra strong thread and of course your matching machine thread. So I'm sewing everything on my machine with a jeans needle. I have my stitch length set to about a number two. So let's start at the beginning and we're going to start with our flippers. So here I have all of my top and bottom flipper pieces. So I've got my front ones and my rear ones and I've put them into their pairs. And you just need to put them right sides together. Remember, you've already got your foam or your wadding pressed into place. So right sides together with each of these in their pairs. And then we're just going to sew from the top of each one all the way around that flipper. Make sure you're going in and doing that detailing on that flipper all the way up to the top. And we leave this top edge open. I only sew these one time on the machine um, and I find that's enough. We're not adding stuffing or anything like that, but do make sure you back and forth on the start and finish. Your seam allowance is four millimeters and that applies to each of those. So I'm gonna get them stitched up, then I'm gonna get them turned through and all of those seams pushed out ready. So there you can see I've got all of my flippers sewn, turned through and I've made sure to push out all of those little pieces there. And then I've stitched across the opening of each of those. So they're all ready to be popped into the seam. So we're just gonna pop those aside. Now I've done exactly the same thing with the tail pieces, put right sides together, stitched around and then left that top edge open. And regardless of how you're adding the tail with a joint or just stitching it in, now we're just going to add some filling. If you are filling um, for a joint, you want to fill it nice and firm and all the way almost to the top. And if you're filling it just to pop into the seam, do pack it nice and firm at the end but leave yourself from room, some room at the top there. So maybe only fill to about a centimetre or so from the edge so that you can tuck it in the seam easily. So I'm gonna get that one filled and packed nice and tight and I'll show you how to put that joint in. So my next step is to go ahead and I've taken a double strand of extra strong thread and I've sewn right close to the edge there around that top edge, a running stitch left my tail ends hanging so that I can knot that off and draw that in. So now I can just drop that little joint in. Just want to show you that I did use my wool felting needle first to pack all of that filling nice and tight. If you've got a wool felting needle, they're really handy for filling. So now I can just drop that joint in like that and I can pull on those threads around that little joint.
pull that right in nice and tight and I will knot that off about four times and snip those thread ends. So there I've got that nice neat little tail ready to be popped in even if you are stitching it in you just want to stitch across that edge just like we did with the flippers ready to go. So we can put that one aside. Now we're going to add our flippers to our base piece. So your base piece has marks on it that show you where our flippers are going to go and I've transferred them to the front as well. Now make sure that you know which is your front and which is your tail. So this is my front. So I'm going to take my front flippers, which are the slightly larger ones, and I'm going to be sewing them into place on that base piece. They're going to be crossing over each other because we're going to get everything tucked in here. Now what I want you to remember, we're just stitching them into place so that they're nice and tidily there for when we add our top shell. It's all going to be sewn together and then we turn it through. So you want to be stitching it into place just within that seam allowance. So right close to the edge there. And I have designed this pattern in such a way that the angles are all correct. So when you add it there in between those two marks, make sure that you're lining it up with the edge of that base piece. You don't want to be adding it into the seam like this because that's going to change the angle that your little flipper is going to sit out. And I've got them all nicely ready for you. So make sure that those edges are lined up. So I like to just stitch on the machine each of those in place. And remember we've got our lower side We've got our felt pieces together. That's also why I make them in felt. It makes it easier to remember that. So I'm going to stitch those into place and then I'm going to do the same with the rear flippers. So they're going to be added so that, and remember too with those, they are matched up with the edge. Don't just pop them in anyhow because that will change how they turn out. So I'm going to get those all stitched into place and I'll show you how that should look. Here we go. So that's how your flippers should look stitched onto your base piece. So your lower sides, the undersides of your flippers, put right sides together. So felt to felt if you're using felt and you can see that they all fold in on themselves. When we add this top section, all of those will be tucked in. So and make sure you've got your front flippers on your front there and back flippers on the rear. So we can put that one aside and we're just going to make up that top shell piece. So first of all, you've got both of your pieces and these are your openings. Now what I do with all of my openings when I'm working with fabric is I sew a close zigzag stitch on that opening just within the seam allowance. It stops it stretching. Now this is a fairly long gradual curve so it can stretch quite a bit. So not only have I done that, I've then sewn a straight stitch just below that. So it's really going to stop any stretching when we fill that one. So then we're going to put right sides together, line that all up and we are going to sew that top centre seam from the base here to that opening. Make sure you back and forth and the same here down to here. We leave this opening because that's where we sew it to the base piece. Do make sure you're back and forth on the start and finish there. Still your four millimeter seam allowance and I sew those seams two times. I've gone ahead and turned that one through. So you can see I've got my opening there and I've rolled those seams out nice and flat. And now I can pop that one back through. And I've opened up those seams right there on each side. Now, if you're going to be adding your tail into the seam and you're not using a joint, in the same way that you stitched those flippers into place, you're going to do the same with your tail. So you'll just stitch the edge of it, which would be flat inside, just like that, so that everything is tucked in for now when we're going to be adding our top piece of our shell. Mine's jointed, so I'm gonna add that later. So I've got everything folded in nicely and you've got a mark at the front. Make sure you're putting your front to your front. This is where your head goes and we check that that's our front and we're going to line up 
that centre mark with that centre seam. That's our first step. We're going to go straight through and anchor that one into place. And then we're going to do the same with the back. Open out that seam. And pin that one into place as well. So now we just have to fit the rest in around. Now what you can do is you can pop all those flippers out that little hole if you like, it helps keep them out of the way. Poke them all up out of there. It reduces the bulk inside when you're pinning that all together. So now I can go ahead and I can line up the entire outside edge. I put a pin through both edges and then come out and take, flip it over and take a little on the other side. It's just like pinning in 3D. And if you've kept your seam allowances, you'll find this will fit absolutely beautifully together. I go back to the other side, I do the same with the other side. And with this section, I don't just pin it in place. I also go ahead and sew it with a tacking overcasting stitch. So that when I go to the machine, nothing's going to slip or move. And all of those fins are going to be incorporated nicely. So I'm going to go ahead and keep on pinning that into place till my top is totally covered. And then I'm going to sew an overcasting stitch and I'll show you how that looks. So this is how your little turtle body parcel should look. It's really just like a great big foot pad that we're putting in there, all tied up nicely there. So now I can take it to the machine and I don't have to worry about anything slipping because I've sewn that overcasting stitch all the way around. So now I'm going to take it to the machine. I find it easier to sew on the base piece when, it, when I've got it under the machine and I can tuck everything in, I can make sure I'm catching everything and make my way slowly around. I do sew that two times and do make sure that you reinforce the areas where, you, where your fins are inserted there and also if you have your tail in there, make sure you do the same there. So I'm going to get that one stitched two times into place. If you need to increase your seam allowance there, um, to about a five millimeter you can go right ahead. I've gone ahead and turned all of that through now very easy to pull through that center especially if you've got those little fins already tucked in and you can see we've got that lovely little naked turtle there. Now you will have a tail out here if you stitch that one into the seam if not you can go ahead and do what I'm going to do and I'm just going to go straight through that seam just a little way it's probably only about a centimetre from the junction there and I'm going to make that hole ready for my bolt to pass through because I can go ahead and add that tail now. Just enlarge that hole with my knitting needle then I can pop that tail through. Make sure that's all pushed down around that bolt. Add that corresponding disc my washer and that nut. Just finger tighten it at this stage and check that that's all good. Then I will tighten that up with my spanner and then I will, and remember that the tail doesn't move so we can tie that, we can actually screw that joint really, really tight and just make sure that if you've got, you're using a two different fabrics like I am that it's that sitting that top fabric is sitting nice and straight at the top there. I'm going to tighten that up and then I will drop a little drop of super glue right into those threads there so that that little nut will never come away. So now I've got that 
tail all in place we can pop that little body aside and we can start working on the head now before we make the head we need to get the eyes ready because we add those during that process so this is what we're looking to make is a little hooded eye like that and I so I have my two pieces that have my fusible webbing applied now on the back of that one you'll see there's a little circle now because the shanks of safety eyes are quite thick what I recommend you do is cut as I have just a little cross straight through that center make sure you get it nicely centered remove that backing paper because it's much easier to cut it when you have the backing paper on and I've got a nice little opening there that's right in the center so then we can go ahead and stitch our top hooded piece in place and we're going to do that I'm doing it with some extra strong thread you could use embroidery cotton use two strands if you are using that and we're going to sew just a little blanket stitch now the top is just a little larger than the the lid is a little larger than the a circle underneath um, that's just to accommodate the room for the eye so I'm going to line it up there and work out just exactly where that sits. I want it all to match up nicely with the other eye. And so I've got my single strand of extra strong thread. I've got a little knot at the end. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to come in through the layers of the felt where it won't be seen. Behind that lid there, I'm coming out right on that edge through that white felt and that will hold that there so my first stitch is right on the edge that's a tiny little blanket stitch that we're sewing so we go through all of the layers bring our needle out through the loop that will anchor that front piece in as we're sewing this around you just need to ease it in just because it's that tiny little bit bigger so if you haven't sewn a blanket stitch before I'll put the link up the top there for you to have a look at my video that shows you how to sew a blanket stitch this is just a really tiny version so I'm going to keep my stitches nice and small and you'll notice that I've matched my thread to the lid of the eye so the purple will travel around and cover some of that white so I'm just going through all of the layers, keeping those stitches nice and small. You can see there, bringing my needle out through the loop each time and pulling that in nice and snug. And I will have that one stitched into place and then cast off at the back there where it won't be seen. So there you go, you can see that I've got that top arch stitch nicely into place and then I can slip that eye straight through and that's all ready to add to the head so we've got our two eyes already nicely matching so pop those aside and we'll get started on making the head and we are going to be taking our two side head pieces and we've got right sides together you've got a, your eye position marked there and line up that top edge so where we're going to sew is that four millimeter seam allowance from from what is the the tip of the nose there all the way down to the back of the neck and make sure that you're back and forth on the start and finish and that you sew that seam two times now I do like to overcast at first I overcast all of my head pieces no matter what I'm making so that nothing slips um, because it's a very important part of your whole creation so get that one stitched into place I've gone ahead and turned that top seam through it's very important that you roll that seam out really well because we want that lovely rounded top of that turtle's head and then I've gone ahead and made my holes ready for those eyes to pass through be very careful that you don't distort where those eye positions are you want them exactly the same on each side and then we can go ahead and we can add our eyes so I like to pop them both in and check that I've got them sitting correctly and I tend to have them just slanting a little way backwards 
you can see there but what you want to do is make sure that you've got them exactly the same on each side so make sure that the two points of that little eyelid are lined up either side and then you can go ahead push that fabric all the way down and go ahead and add your backing piece on and crunch that down if it's useful to you you can use the end of a cotton reel to push that down just make sure that you protect the underneath of your eye here so that you're not scratching the surface of that eye so I'm going to get them very carefully lined up I'm going to take some time to get them in the right position before you clamp those on because once you clamp those on they're there for good that's why they're called safety eyes so make sure you've got it all lined up do do tilt them a little way backwards because if you tilt them forwards too far forwards your little turtle will look a little angry we don't want him to look angry so tilt them back just a little not too far just a little bit and by the time that's all put together that will sit beautifully once you have those eyes clamped into place we can just pop that one through you want to make sure that you've opened up that seam at the front there and press that open nice and flat now we're going to add the lower chin seam it's just like adding a center head gusset so except that it's on the chin so we're going to line up our center mark of our chin there with that seam that center seam at the front there I'm going to put a pin straight through that center mark and straight through the center of that seam you want to make sure it's very perfectly lined up and then we're just going to pin that gusset into place so the best way to do that is taking our pin through all the layers flip that one over take up a little on the other side and push our pin head all the way down I'm going to do the same on the other side it'll go in more evenly if you go from side to side so same thing pin all the way through flip it over take up a little of that fabric push that pin head all the way down and if I just continue on lining up those two edges either side back and forth that and I've kept to my seam allowances that will pin into place all the way neatly right down to that neck edge which I'm going to do on both sides and then I'm going to overcast stitch that one into place once that overcasting stitching is in place we can remove all the pins and makes it much easier for us to stitch this seam so we can sew the majority of the side seams on the machine but this front section I always sew by hand because it's it's your mouth line and it's your T junction there so it's important that it's right so I've got a single strand of extra strong thread and I'm going to be sewing a stab back stitch which is the stitch we use for hand sewing any seams in soft sculpture I just start off with two stitches right on top of each other there and then we will start our stitch now I've got a video that shows you exactly how to sew this stitch I'll put the link up the top there for you but what we do is we come from the underneath and we're going through all the layers of course bring our needle through in at the seam allowance and we're going back into the exit hole that we just came out of previously and pull that one all the way through then we're going to come back again and we're just taking little stitches and then each time I'm going back into the hole that I just came out of so it's a fully linked stitch and it means you can make it just as straight as if you were sewing it on the machine and because it's fully linked it's stitched back and front and it's very very strong and you only need to sew it once when you're using the extra strong thread so you can see that little seam and I just need to sew and match it up with the other side so right the way around the front there down to here do make sure that you really lock in and center that front section there and once I've done that I can go ahead and sew up the rest of those seams on the machine but I will sew those on the machine two times and once you turn that through that gives us our beautiful little turtle head and now we're ready for filling so filling this one 
is pretty simple it's a good shape to fill because it's large at the end and it goes in narrow so it holds all of its filling at the front and you can still get fingers in through there so what you have to focus on is getting that front little mouth section really filled out nice and evenly and this top curve of the head make sure that you really tuck it in there keep tucking it in get that nicely rounded and be watching that your eyes don't get distorted either side and keep filling away until that's really firm use your wool felting needle to pack it in as you go we're going to be filling till almost up to the edge ready for that net bolt to go in so that has a lovely little turtle head all filled there it's really nice and firm I've checked that my eyes are nice and even there you should have a nice little front sort of beaky shape there tucked in to underneath the chin filling out a little more on that lovely rounded head so I've got that all packed in nice and firm with my felting needle it's nice and flat and I have gone ahead and sewn a double strand of extra strong thread sewn a running stitch all around that neck edge just like we did with the tail left my thread ends hanging I've tied my first preliminary knot and I've got my joint ready to go so I can just tuck that in there and we're going to do the same thing as we're going to pull it in around and tie that in as tight as we can around that bolt it's handy to have someone hold that knot for you and then knot that off at least four times let's add that beautiful little head to our body now you have your mark on your pattern templates that show you where that head goes I've made that hole in the same way with my awl and my knitting needle we're just going to pass that one through again make sure that all of that fabric is pushed right down around that bolt add that corresponding disc washer and nut just going to finger tighten again for now and make sure we've got nothing caught up in there in those seams make sure all the fabric is pulled out then you just need to go ahead tighten that one up remember that we want a bit of movement for posability with this one so you need to do it very tight because over time all of those layers compress and your joints will always slacken off a little so always make it so you can just shift it and that should be about right and then I will do the same thing and add a little drop of super glue in there so that that nut will never come adrift so now all we need to do is fill this body so the majority of this is just filled with the same our same polyester filling the areas you need to watch is you want to really fill out that front section so that little head does sit up we don't want it folding in on itself so you really want to pack in well around that joint and above that joint but also I like to add a little bit of weight to the back end so I just use some dry white rice and if you're concerned about it getting the rice getting um, any moisture in it I collect these little silica gel packets the ones that come with all your packaged goods like shoes and so on and they will absorb any moisture so I tend to throw one of those in there as well and it keeps everything nice and dry alternatively instead of the rice you can use some fine aquarium gravel or maybe you have um, some plastic um, filling pellets they could work as well so important to pack out that front section if you're going to be adding some weight focus it at the back because it'll keep this little head sitting up because the head is larger than the back end does tend to weigh more so it does help to balance it out so get it all filled up nice and firm again again use your wool felting needle to pack it all in and then we'll be ready to close that opening I have my little turtle all filled now now if you're adding some rice like I have you can go ahead and leave that just a little softer you can see there's some give there you just want to make sure that the front section is filled out so that our little turtle is looking up at us we don't want him you know his little face down here little bit of weight in the back there and you can see it's nice and easy for me to close that opening so 
We're going to do that with extra strong thread and I'm going to sew that closed with a ladder stitch. I'll, I'll put the link up to the video at the top of my ladder stitch but it's just a single strand of extra strong thread with a whole pile of knots at the end and we're going to go in underneath and come out at the seam allowance right where that opening starts there. You can see there, if you're in doubt about your thread colour, always go darker than your fabric. It will be more invisible that way. So we're just going to now travel across and dive in the other side at the seam allowance. And we're going to just travel down the length of one stitch. I'm going to keep our stitches quite small and pull that one in. Already that one is pulling in. Travel back across to the other side again. We're going to go back into that first hole where that big knot is. Travel down the same amount, the same length of stitch as we did the other side. And when you pull that in, you can see those edges coming together. It's important to keep your stitches even. So don't be taking larger stitches one side than the other. And it's important to go back into the, the last hole you came out of each time. That's what makes it all linked and makes it all draw in well together. Crossed over. Each time pulling on those stitches so that it's closing that one nicely. When you've got a large opening like this that is quite soft, as you go you can be adding more filling if you feel you need to do that. So I'm just going to make my way down. When I get to the bottom here, my last stitch, I'll just bring my needle out right on the seam there, take a tiny little stitch, make a knot and dive back in and hide that knot. If you're, if you're new to sewing, doing to cl closing with a ladder stitch, don't worry too much because the shell is going on top of this, so it really won't be seen. So that completes our beautiful little naked turtle body. So we're going to pop our little turtle aside and we're going to make start making that beautiful shell. So we're going to start by making the base of our shell which is just like making a little quilt. So we've got our base piece that already has uh, either your fusible foam or your fusible wadding applied and we're going to put right sides together You've got marks for your opening, which are here. And we're going to just sew a four to five millimeter seam allowance all the way around the outside from the start of each of those marks. So this is our opening. Make sure you're back and forth on those openings. And then we're going to sew all the way around the outside. Then you can go ahead and turn that one through Make sure that you push out all those seams, give it a good press and when you're pressing it, press those little, that little opening under so that we can go ahead and top stitch it afterwards and close that off. So there I have my quilt base, uh, my little uh, shell base pressed out like a quilt. You can see I've turned the edges under on that opening and been able to just close it as I have stitched around with the top stitch right close to the edge and that has our little quilt base done. Now what you can do here, you can get quite creative here, you can quilt this base with stitching any way that you like. I've got a little grid pattern so I've just followed my lines. I'm going to be putting in a couple of parallel lines here, a line down the centre and I've just created a little triangle to really give me that sort of base of the shell look with those different segments. But you could do any kind of crazy quilting you like. You might want to just do lines or just cubes, whatever you like. Go right ahead and I'm going to stitch those into place. I've used a heat erasable pen to do that and I'll be able to just iron that after I've stitched it. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch over every one of those lines. You can see there what a lovely finish it is doing that stitching, that quilting through all of those layers. Even something like a heart would be absolutely beautiful there, but it's definitely worth doing something. And so now all that's left for the base is that we stitch on onto the wrong side. We stitch on our little receiver press studs, the, the negative side of our press studs, and we've stitched them on at every single point you see there. This is where the tail sits, this is where the head sits, 
So this is just either side of the tail and then on every corner you stitch those into place and of course just stitch them through one layer. You don't want it showing, your stitching showing on the other side. So sew those to the wrong side of your um, base panel there. We can now move on to starting our top shell pieces. It's very exciting this part. Now we're going to take our lining of our top shell pieces. We've got our two pieces there. This is the one with the opening and no uh, fusible wadding on that at all. And we're going to line up that top centre seam and you're just going to sew that same four millimetre seam allowance up to the start of that opening from the edge to the start of that opening make sure you're back and forth and from here on the opening and down to the neckline there everything else we leave open and uh, you only need to sew that once because we're not actually stuffing that shell at all just make sure you do reinforce your beginnings and your endings make sure that you turn that one through and roll out that centre top seam then we can pop that one aside and now we're going to start work on our actual top of our shell and uh, you can see there that I have already sewn on my yo-yos for one side how pretty is that so what I've done there is I have laid out both of my shell pieces with the uh, wadding applied and I've got them seam to seam, centre seam to centre seam and I've worked out my layout that way. That way I'm making sure I'm not putting two colours the same next to each other. Now that's because I'm using multiple colours. You might be using all of the same fabric um, for your yo-yos and then it really won't matter. If you find a print that's got multiple colours in it you can cut all of your yo-yos from that same print so long as it differs enough from your base colour. So what I've gone ahead and remember I told you about all of those marks that I've put in, they're exactly right for the size of the yo-yos and spaced perfectly for you. So do follow that um, as a guide. And I've stitched them all into place very, very securely through all of those layers and that's pulled those lovely little buttons right in and you can see I've done different buttons for different things there. So it really is just a matter of laying them out. I tend to take a photograph of it with my iPad once I've got it laid out and then I can take them all off and I know where to sew everything. So, um, and it is a bit of a big job sewing all those buttons on but the end, re end result is so lovely and it really does look like a lot of work has gone into it. So, if you haven't made a felt, uh, fabric yo-yo before, I'm going to show you now. And that is, you have your three sizes there. I've given you the amounts that you need to make of each. And it's just cut from fabric, no, any, no interfacing or anything applied there. I've got my extra strong thread. And I'm going to start by sewing a running stitch all around the outside edge. And I'm starting on the right side of the fabric. So I'm just going to make my way around. I'm very as close to the edge as I can get without it all fraying away. And I'm going to leave that tail end hanging so that we can tie it up. Once you've sewn that all the way around, you finish up right next to your first stitch and still on the right side of the fabric. And now I've just tied a first little knot and I'm going to hold my thumb in the middle there and pull those thread ends in. Just going to pull on that knot and you really need to pull them all the way in. Give it a squash and make sure it's all nice and even. You've got it nicely centered. Everything's pulled out. Should be a lovely little circle. Then you can really pull those ends in. Super tight because we don't want any of those frayed edges to show. We want our button to be able to cover it. And then just tie off that second knot. Pulling it right in. Knot that off a couple of more times and snip those thread ends and you've got your perfect little yo-yo. So now we can go ahead and sew on 
our yo-yos into place. A nice little yellow one will sit there. Adding all of our buttons, get those all sewn into place before we put that top shell together. Once we have both of those top shell pieces all decorated, and as I said before, your embellishments can be anything that you like. You'll notice that they are kept away from your seam lines all the way around. So now we're just going to put right sides together and we're going to sew that centre top seam in the same way that we did with the liner piece, only this time we don't need to leave an opening. So make sure that you really line that up and we're going to sew that same four millimetre seam allowance all the way across to the base of that tail there. Look at that gorgeous top shell. I'm so excited with this one. Okay, so we will be adding our final little one at the top. We're gonna to do that when we put the lining together and it'll pull everything together. So for now, we're now going to put right sides together with those two pieces. Make sure you do roll out that seam. It's the last time you'll get to do that. And we're going to put right sides together. So this will be where we turn through. So now it's just a simple matter of lining up all of those edges. And I will clip that all the way around at all my key points. If you've kept to your seam allowances, everything will fit beautifully. I know I keep saying that, it's important. There we go, and then our centre seam will line up with the centre seam of the other piece there. Clip that one into place. The same with at the back. You'll just need to clip it all the way around. And then we're just going to stitch it. Now I do with this one, I overcast the whole shell two pieces into place just because it's much easier to get it all nice and even if those pins or clips are out of the way. So I will go ahead, get that all clipped into place. I will sew my overcasting stitch, take it to the machine and sew that same four millimeter seam allowance right the way around. Do make sure that you back and forth on your junctions like that. And, uh, and then we will be ready to turn it through. So that has my shell all turned through and I've gone around and rolled out that seam all the way around. Now you could top stitch that, uh, that whole outer edge if you like. I don't like to do that. I like the roundedness of the, of the seam there. So I don't do that there but I do give it a really good press to make sure that everything is turned under. Now that opening that we have on the other side, you can just slip stitch it closed if you like, or you can do what I do because this is really largely not seen. And that is I take it to the iron. So if you can see, I've pulled that lining up and turn those edges under, press them together. And now I can just take it to the machine and stitch it just in the same color and that will have that opening closed. And then I'm going to just add, give the whole thing a press and I'm going to add my top little yo-yo with my button right in the center there, just to pull all of those um, layers together. And here is my completed shell with my little last little top yo-yo popped into place. I've got that all pressed. So our last step is to add our press studs. So our matching positive side to our little turtle. So the way that we do that, the first two are really simple. So remember that this is the neck and this is the tail. So I've already added my first two. The first ones go right in that front point. Just give yourself just a little bit of room, but you do want them nice and close to the edge. Remember, we're not stitching all the way through, just through those top, uh, sorry, those lower layers. So nothing shows through the other side. So first of all, stitch your corner ones into place. And we've got our, I'm gonna clip those into place there. And then your next one, you want to take a pin and line up on your shell, top shell, exactly the center of that snap. Drop a pin in there, and then you can go ahead and do the same with the other side. And then you can sew your next snap into place. And as you can see, 
I'm going to pop this on my turtle. Clip those first ones into place. The next ones. There we go. So there's the start of our little shell. Now, the rest of them you'll see will line up really beautifully with the edge there. And you have to just do the same thing and pop your pins in. So for now, I just like to pop a pin through at each point. Because I want to be sure of this final one that comes up underneath here. This is the one that's quite crucial. You want to get it into the right position. You want to make sure that your shell is in the right position and get it all pinned down. Once you have all of those points marked all the way around, you can just go ahead and sew your snaps in place. And you do see that it's important that we sew those snaps nice and close to the edge because we want as much room as possible. So I'm going to get them all sewn into place, snap that shell on and we will be done. So there we go, we have completed a little sea turtle all snapped into place and you can see what a beautiful fit that shell is. Now a couple of points to remember this one, remember when you're working in soft sculpture in 3D sewing your seam allowance are absolutely important. So. For, because they're, it's made up in all different pieces, you want them all to fit together and they will fit beautifully if you keep to that four millimeter seam allowance. And you can see what a lovely fit that is. It's lovely to be able to pop that off. I don't know if it was just me as a child or other people thought that way. I was intensely curious as a child to see what a turtle looked like without a shell on. <laughs> Okay, now that I say that out loud, it sounds a bit weird. Um, <laughs> but you know what? This will satisfy that curiosity. If you're making it for a child one, it'd be lovely they can pop that shell off. And I was just thinking, you could make snap-on shells. You could make different shells for them. That'd be exciting. I'll leave that to you guys. So I've only got one question left for you all, and that is, do you have your exit buddy? And yes, we do. We do have an exit buddy. Bring in Mr. T. There we go, Mr. T. So now all of my masterclass people, you can make a buddy for your Mr. T. And if you feel, once you've made this little one, if you feel confident, my, my lovelies on Pay It Forward, how about you come along and join masterclass and make Mr. T. So I purposely made them two very different looks so that we've got, uh, you can see that absolute storybook style there with that beautiful, simple little face, absolutely gorgeous on a bed. And uh, of course that more realistic animated sort of coloring there of Mr. T. Look, I hope you've really enjoyed it. I hope he is, uh, that has satisfied everybody here that you didn't miss out on the whole turtle business. Um, and I thank you so much for joining me. Well, I have thoroughly enjoyed making this, um, this one up for you this week, everybody. Look, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, you could give me a thumbs up. That would be absolutely beaut. Now, I think what we need to do now is absolutely flood our Facebook page with turtles. We've got two sizes now. There'll be all shapes, all colours. I'm so excited. There'll be Mr. T's and little Mr. T's and all sorts of colours. Very, very exciting. I know you're going to be super creative with these two. So... If you uh, haven't joined our Facebook page, I'll put the link down below. Also down there, you will find that link to my masterclass. If you would love to come on, I would love for you to come along and join me. Um, I do know that that uh, silly season is nearly upon us and I am hearing all of your Christmassy requests. You know I'm the Grinch, don't you? <laughs> Never mind, I do have a really sweet Christmas project for you all right here on Pay It Forward. It will be free and we will make it together and I'm sure it will be enjoyable. So I look forward to sharing that with you very soon in time for Christmas. So in the meantime, everybody get creative, stay safe and make sure you pay all of the good things forward because you never know what people are going through. So until next time, it is Huru from me.